Greater Town Meeting members, uh, this article and motion are necessary in order to repair damage suffered on Shady Hill Drive uh, over the course of this winter. We encountered a water break, water main break, that because of the frozen ground was not evident for a long enough period of time that it succeeded in undermining about 200 feet or so of the side of the road. That condition has been fairly stable through the winter, but now that the warm weather is coming and the road uh, bed is beginning to soften up, uh, we don't want to find out how far it goes simply by finding out uh, where the cars fall into the ditch. So it's necessary to, re to uh, perform this repair. The price is as it was stated, and it will be paid for from the water enterprise. Is there any further discussion? Chair sees no one seeking recognition. Therefore, on the main motion under Article 8, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, <coughs> unanimous. Article 9. Mrs. Belmonte. Mr. Moderator, I move to transfer the sum of $250,000 from the earnings of the Hillview Country Club to the Stabilization Fund. Said amount is reimbursement of funds advanced to the Hillview Commission under Article 4 of the Special Town Meeting on January the 19th, 1988. You've heard the motion and I assume that since it came from the Chairman of the Finance Committee, it has a favorable recommendation of the Finance Committee. Is that correct, Mrs. Belmonte? Unanimously. Unanimous recommendation. This is a motion to transfer $250,000 to the Stabilization Fund from the Hillview Country Club earnings. Uh, is there any uh, further discussion? Mrs. Belmonte. As the motion said, this is the uh, money that the town gave the, uh, the Hillview Commission from Stabilization in 1988 to start up the committee. The committee should have a study committee, which is what has happened tonight under Article 1. But right now, this money is to reimburse the town. This is not the surplus money that's coming in the future years. This money right now, if it's left in the Hillview, it can only be used for capital items for the Hillview. It could be lowered, the golf fees or the town can be reimbursed for services performed for the Hillview because this is an enterprise fund. This money is coming from the Hillview. It goes into stabilization. It takes two-thirds vote of town meeting to get the money out. So town meeting will decide how to spend this money. And right the now... The chair will point out that it takes two-thirds to get it out of stabilization, but it only takes a simple majority to put it in there. Mr. Moderator, the Finance Committee at this time would like to give a financial picture of the town. Mrs. Belmonte, uh, please proceed with uh, your report at this time. Mr. Dodge. Let's see, it's about 8.15 right now. That's where, I, that's where I thought I'd be up here. We're still on standard time, I guess. <coughs> A few things I'd like to talk about tonight. Just quickly, I'd like to go over, uh, real quickly, the role of the Finance Committee. Okay, is it focused? No? Whoa. I don't think I can do anything with size. Can you see it? I'm sorry if you can't. So, down? Ah, oh, thank you. Okay. They see, the Finance Committee consists of nine members appointed by the town moderator. We have primarily two functions. The first function is this, as advisors to town meeting on the financial situation of the town. We basically review all the budget details in order that each and every member of the town does not have to do that. That pretty much consists of these three thick binders sitting here on this table. That's pretty much the detail behind all the budgets. Our responsibility is to, do, is to go through that and save each and every one of you 
from having to do that. The second thing is managing the reserve fund. Each year we set aside an amount of money that we, the Finance Committee, vote on to, on certain situations, extraordinary and unforeseen situations that come up. The reason that money's there is that if, if it was not there, what we would have to do is every time a situation came up like that, we'd have to have a special town meeting at the cost of thousands of dollars to take care of it. So in other words, our role there is to vote in the manner in which we think town meeting would have acted. Okay. One of the points I want to make clear is the fact of what we are not. We're not town government experts. We're not education experts. We're not even financial experts. What we are is ordinary townspeople, a subset of town meeting. We're interested in the overall well-being of the town, and we try not to serve any special interests. Oops, lost. Da -da. One of the things we did do this year as a result of uh, town meeting action last April and last October is that we were reviewing the, the, for, the, yeah, the format of the warrant. We conducted a uh, public hearing uh, last fall and we took in recommendations from the townspeople plus wherever we, can, we could. We uh, examined reports from other towns and I think what, if you look at the town, at the omnibus article tonight, you see that there are some differences. We have put narratives in, in between certain line items. We've tried to describe different things that happen. I mean, if we give you a little narrative on what each department is, how many people are in it, et cetera. A little more information to give you some idea of exactly what it is you're buying for each dollar amount. The major thing that we did do this year is the change in, is in the manner in which we are dealing with salaries. In the past, we have always had two separate line items called a clerical pool and non-union salaries. What we did is we took all the salaries out of each department and placed them into these big pools, as we call them. The philosophy was there is that if the need be, you can move the people over to this certain si uh, situations where they're needed. For example, if you need some additional people over this department, you move them over there, etc. What we really found out was the fact that really they don't move around that much. They're pretty much assigned to the departments and stay there. So what we've done is in this budget is we've put all of the sal salaries for a particular department underneath that department. So for the first time when you're voting on a department budget, you're going to see the total cost of that department. Can we raise that curtain up there? This is a little bit of editorializing. What has happened since the passage of Proposition 2 and a half is the fact that the budget process begins by saying, how much money do we have this year? And at that point, the process, we all run around figuring out, well, we have this much to spend. What are we going to do with that amount of money? That process is a little bit backwards, I believe, and the Finance Committee believes. Because what's happening is the Finance Committee in town meeting only gets to see what people feel that we can afford. We never get to see what is actually needed. What do we really need as, as a town? What we need to do as a town is establish goals. Not just what are we going to be doing for fiscal year 93, what are we going to be doing for fiscal year 94 and beyond? We need a plan. We, we really need to know where we're going. One of the questions that we keep constantly asking is, yeah, we're voting on these dollar amounts and we're funding these departments and whatever, but what is it that we're not doing? What is it that we're not accomplishing that we as a town should be accomplishing? That question has to be addressed. We have to move forward. The other, as, as a direct result of having a plan and having a direction, I think it will prevent us from getting into the situation of us versus them. We want to stay out of that situation at all costs. And we have to you know, establish our priorities. 
and, and find what is needed and what is justified. Capital also falls into the same scenario. We need to know what our five-year plan is, what we're going to do this year, what we're going to do next year, and out for a few years, and what are the funding sources going to be. Again, what's the question is, what's not being done? Well, now I want to get into some numbers for you. Really what we're doing this year, and what we did last year, first I'm going to start with 1992, the current fiscal year we're in. What we did, and again what we're going to continue to do this year, is we're using free cash and stabilization for operations. By operations, I mean they're the things we do year in and year out. When we put that money into operations, we're going to need it next year and the year after that and the year after that. Stabilization was originally intended to be for capital items and one-time occurrences of spending. If we look at this right here, between the April and October meetings last year, we put over $600,000 into the operations side of the, of the town. What that does, what I'm trying to show with this chart is the fact that if you look at this figure here, because of, with two and, two, Proposition 2 and a half, the $568,000 is the additional funds that we can raise under Proposition 2 and a half. The $115,000 is the money we're also allowed to raise because of growth in the town. So that means over the last year we can raise an additional over $683,000. Okay. Right now, it's anticipated that state aid or revenue sharing to the town of North Reading is going to decrease by $260,000 from last year. So thus, we have an additional resources funds available of $443,000. That's how we sat off. But if you look at the fact that we used reserves or stabilization to fund operations, that money's $621,000 is really already spent. So in fact, we start off the year with $177,000 less. Now we're talking fiscal year 93. We're continuing down the same path. We're going to be using free cash and stabilization to again fund some operations in the town. Basically right now, as the Finance Committee is recommending, that's $500,000 worth of funding. What happens is what I want to show is the effect of that's going to have over fiscal year. I apologize, this is just not going to fit on here. What I'm trying to show again here is if we take the growth by two and a half, and it's $550,000 projected for next fiscal year, fiscal year 94, okay? What I'm showing is, is that with the, fund, the figures we know now, $720,000 in new funds would be available to us. By spending $500,000 of reserves this year into the operations budgets, in fact, next year we'll start off with only $200,000 more to spend. What I'm really trying to demonstrate is that we are really, the way we're funding the budget, we're really heading off down to one of two paths. We're either going to turn around next year and start taking out some of the things we added this year, or we're headed down for a general override of Proposition 2 and a half. The town has done very well to, I think, to survive this long as it has over 10 years without facing an override. But the net result is 